Born in 1832 on a working farm in upstate New York, Mary Walker was the second youngest of six children. Her parents were abolitionists who supported the Underground Railroad. The Walker children were raised to be free thinkers and questioned dogma. Mary's parents demonstrated non-traditional gender roles and shared work around the farm. Her mother often participated in heavy manual labor while her father helped with the household chores. Mary didn't wear restrictive women's clothes as she worked the family farm growing up. She and her parents viewed corsets, tight lacings, and other traditional lady garments of the time as unhealthy. As she grew older, Mary continued to dress in a non-traditional way. She was arrested several times for her clothing, with charges ranging from impersonating a man to creating a public nuisance. Nonetheless, she continued to dress as she pleased and advocated for other women to do the same. She was heard to say, I don't wear men's clothes, I wear my own clothes. Mary was fascinated by her father's work as a self-taught country doctor. In 1855, Mary graduated with honors from the Syracuse College of Medicine, one of the few medical schools that allowed women, and began working as a physician. Her private practice was not profitable, however, as many refused to see a female doctor. At the outbreak of the Civil War, Dr. Walker attempted to enlist in the Union Army as a surgeon. Because she was a woman, she was refused. Dr. Walker volunteered in makeshift hospitals, treating severely wounded soldiers. She often requested appointment as a Union Army surgeon and was continually denied. In 1862, Dr. Walker risked her life on the battlefields in Virginia to save countless soldiers and advocated for treatment of wounded limbs rather than automatic amputation. Some of the Union Army surgeons she worked with supported Dr. Walker's efforts to be compensated for her work, and in 1864, she finally succeeded. Dr. Walker frequently crossed enemy lines to treat civilians and wounded Confederate soldiers. On one such journey, Confederate soldiers caught and held her for several months as a prisoner of war. She was released in a prisoner exchange and corresponded with President Abraham Lincoln about her ordeal. Then she returned to her duties as a Union Army surgeon. For her continued acts of heroism during the war, Dr. Walker received the Medal of Honor in 1865. After the war, Dr. Walker returned to civilian life and stood up for suffrage, equal pay, and dress reform, which led to another arrest for wearing pants. In 1881, Dr. Walker unsuccessfully ran for Senate. In the early 1900s, the War Department revoked Dr. Walker's medal on the grounds that she was a civilian and not a military member at the time of her Medal of Honor actions. However, in typical Dr. Mary Walker style, she continued to wear the medal on her lapel until her death in 1919. Sixty years later, her medal was restored. 